watching News 25. Local coverage you can count on. News 25 is brought to you by J.K. Nelson Law, voted best of Las Vegas. Give them a call, 702-727-9900. Thank you for joining us here on News 25 and Ace Country Radio and streaming at kpvm.tv and now on Roku devices. I'm Chris Palermo on this Monday, April 22nd. Here's what's happening. Two vehicles erupt in flames Sunday at the top floor of the Siphony Park parking structure in Las Vegas. Samantha Roberts has the details. On Sunday, April 21st, the Las Vegas Fire and Rescue responded to a vehicle fire on the top floor of the Symphony Park parking structure around 12.30 p.m. Upon arrival, firefighters discovered two vehicles fully engulfed in flames. After investigations, the cause of the fire was determined to be from one vehicle attempting to charge another vehicle's dead battery. The car owners had left the vehicle unattended, and when they returned, they found both cars were on fire. Crews were able to contain and extinguish the fire, and there were no reported injuries. More news now. Earth and Arbor Day happened at Saturday at the Bob Rood Community Center. Many vendors were there. News 25 catches up with Heather Freeman and Tamil and Taylor to break it all down for us. Hi, my name is Heather Freeman. I'm with the University of Nevada, Reno Extension Master Gardener Program. And with me, I have... Hi, this is Tamil and Taylor, and I'm with Nye Communities Coalition, and we're here at the Earth Day event. Um, we've had an exciting day. Uh, we've given some presentations, uh, one of those being Tamlin was named Environmental Person of the Year. Congratulations, Tamlin. Thank you. Um, you want to tell us about your presentation? Yes, I talked about the gleaning program. And what gleaning is, it's basically if you have a garden or you're a farmer even, and you have extra produce, fruits or vegetables, we match that up with a pantry, a food pantry here in Pahrump, so that nothing goes to waste. And we're trying to increase the fruits and vegetables in each one of our pantries so um, to make it a healthier place. That's great. Um, along with that, my presentation was on worm composting so that nothing really does go to waste. Um, anything that you might have left over um, in your kitchen, coffee grounds, banana peels, apple cores, can be eaten by worms. Um, the little bucket of red wigglers that you see for sale at the nursery, if you get yourself a worm bin or come see me at the extension or at farmer's market on a Saturday morning, um, I can give you some information about building your own with a couple of buckets. Um, another thing that we had here down at the Earth Day Arbor Day celebration was we had a Shred It truck sponsored by the Southern Nye County Conservation District and Meadows Bank, and we were very grateful the shredder truck could come and get rid of all of our old documents securely. Anyway, at the coalition, we have ongoing programs. Uh, we do have a workshop coming up. We call it uh, uh, Plant and Paint, and it's going to be where we get together, learn some about basic, basic gardening, but also the paint part is we're going to paint some pots, some planting pots, and that's going to be at Nye Communities Coalition next Saturday. So some, a fun project. So that'll be Saturday the 27th. Um, do you know what time that starts? That's from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. That sounds like a mm -hmm. lot of fun. Mm -hmm. And then over at the extension office, we also are going to have a spring in the garden event on Saturday, May 4th from 1 to 4 p.m. Um, we'll be featuring lots of different things that you want to be cleaning up in your garden or landscape, um, caring for cactus, uh, some seasonal tree pruning, um, we always talk about pruning when it's dormant, but occasionally you need to keep after your shrubs and trees just to keep them looking in good shape. Um, our rose bush over there is beautiful. So if you wanna stop and smell the roses, come on over to 1651 East Calvada Boulevard during daylight hours. We have the beautiful rose bush right next to the mailbox. Um, you'll see it from the parking lot. So if you missed Earth Day event at Bob Rudd Center this year. Um, we are 
anticipating bigger and better than ever next year and we're always looking for partners to come alongside and help plan and be part of the great event sounds good to me can't wait to next year <laughs> yep and as always reduce reuse recycle and there's a couple others refuse so if you just refuse plastic in the first place then you don't have to worry about recycling it um, if you can choose bring your own bag or choose a paper bag um, refuse a plastic utensil or a plastic straw um, the less plastic we take is the less plastic we have to deal with I agree <laughs> thank you and happy Earth Day and the theme for this year's Earth Day is Planet versus Plastics, a commitment to call for the end of plastics for the sake of human and planetary health. The theme's proposed goal is to reduce the production of plastics by 60% in 2040 and ultimately build a plastic-free future. More news coming up. You're watching News 25. You're watching News 25, local coverage you can count on. And welcome back to News 25. I'm Chris Palermo. A new study places Nevada in the top 10 states that have the lowest amount of young homeowners. News 25's R.J. Camacho explains. According to a new study, Nevada has ranked within the top 10 states that have the fewest amount of young homeowners. This study was conducted by Agent Advice, who are real estate experts who used data from the United States Census Bureau on mortgage statuses based on homeowners between the ages of 15 and 34 back in 2022. According to the study, Hawaii is at the top of the list, with 1.49% of the population being young homeowners. The state has a total of 300 9,687 homeowners, with 21,428 being between the ages of 15 to 34. Only 4,430 of that number are mortgage-free. Second on the list was California, which had only 617,931 young homeowners, with 500,567 of those homeowners having a mortgage. The percentage rate for California is at 1.58%, the study shows. Third was New York, having a young homeowner population of 1.92%. The study states that New York has a total of 377,236 young homeowners in total. 293,089 have a mortgage, while 84,147 do not. New Jersey was fourth, having 199,204 young homeowners, with 27,781 having paid off their mortgages. This amount to 2.15% of the population being young homeowners. Massachusetts has a population of 2.28% young homeowners, landing them in fifth place. Florida comes in sixth place with a percentage of 2.29% of young homeowners. Our home state of Nevada is seventh on the list with 2.47% of young homeowners being within the state. This equates to 78,617 young homeowners in total with only 13,619 having paid off their mortgages. Connecticut ranks eighth with 2.52%, followed by Oregon with 2.53%, and Maryland at the bottom having 2.62% of young homeowners. Chris Heller, who is from Agent Advice, spoke on the matter, stating that, as more young people attempt to get into the property market, it's evident that some areas prove a lot harder to get on the ladder. The leading states likely have fewer young homeowners because of steep prices due to popular demand. Due to this, he says that it's understandable for young first-time buyers to gravitate towards more affordable states. The Las Vegas Police Department safeguards Clark County in a variety of unique ways. Let's hear from our Las Vegas roving correspondent, Maria Centers, who now joins us from Police Department Headquarters. The Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department has a humanitarian hero on their workforce in the name of Brianna Brez. Brez was the first point of contact when a frantic mother called in, and through her patience, guidance, expertise, and wisdom, she helped save the boy's life. It made my heart sink. I was uh, scared for this mom. I couldn't imagine being in that position, finding my son in that situation. Um, so I was very scared for her. Um, 
So as, as fast as I could figure out what she needed, I wanted to get her that help. It was just honestly like any other day, it came to work. Um, that's when I was still as a call taker. Um, I was just doing my phone calls. It was actually the last call I took that day and I was about to log off before I took that call. Um, but I decided to take one more call and it happened to be that call. According to a recent report by the Southern Nevada Health District, between the years 2020 to 2023, Clark County's overdose death rate spiked 97 percent in instances where fentanyl was mixed with cocaine or methamphetamine, rising from 73 to 144 fatalities respectively. 911 emergency, Brez 18968, do you need police, fire or medical? You think your son's overdosing? I hear a frantic woman saying that she needs help, but I figured out that she needed uh, medical um, because her son was overdosing. Ma'am, I have to I have to get the fire department on the line. I'm going to stay on the phone with you, okay? For drug users that do not take opioids on a regular basis, ingesting stimulants that are cut with fentanyl places an individual at a higher risk of overdose. She didn't know what her son was taking. Um, I asked if he, if she, if he was known to use any drugs, and she said no. So we had no idea what he may have gotten into, what he may have taken. Um, but she just found him um, unresponsive in his room, and she couldn't get him to wake up, and she was very, very scared. Typically, it's not in our purview to take phone calls that are more medical related. Um, but since his mother was so frantic. Um, I just wanted to be there for her. I started to get the information from her, so at least I could get an officer on the way. So if he needed Narcan, they can issue that for him. Here, I'll help you out, okay? Thankfully, um, he did use narcotics, but it wasn't anything detrimental to him or his health. But the police and fire department got there in a timely fashion. We're here to do the job of assisting people in their most dire time. And um, I'm thankful that I got to be part of that. Um, and I'm happy that nothing came about him and him and his mom are, are completely okay. We're the, we're the calm in the storm. Reporting right here from Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department Headquarters, I'm Maria Centers with News 25 Las Vegas. Thank you, Maria. And additional information about LVMPD can be found online at LVMPD.com. More news now. Silver State Schools Credit Union has awarded 10 scholarships to 10 lucky recipients. News 25 has the details to this enlightening story. Silver State Schools Credit Union's Board of Directors announced its 10 scholarship recipients for the 2024 People Over Profit or POP Foundation Scholarship Program on Saturday, April 20th. Each winner selected was a Nevada high school senior and will receive a $2,000 scholarship renewable for up to four years for a total of up to $8,000 to use towards higher education. The award-winning credit union has awarded more than $1.2 million in scholarships to graduating Nevada high school seniors since 1989. The scholarship program recognizes seniors who demonstrate excellence in academics, extracurricular activities, and community involvement. Scholarship awards are named after past and current board members, as well as the credit union's charitable foundation, the SSSCU People Over Profit or POP Foundation. I'm continually proud of and inspired by the remarkable dedication and achievements of our student applicants, said Scott A. Arkles, the president and CEO of Silver State Schools Credit Union. Their commitment to academic excellence and community service is a testament to their potential as future leaders. At Silver State Schools Credit Union, we stand ready to champion their journey, providing unwavering support as they shape the future of our communities. The SSSCU and the People Over Profit or POP Foundation will continue to provide educational resources through scholarships, financial literacy, visual arts, and other educational opportunities through our relationships with the Clark County School District, Charter and Private Schools, the Nevada System of Higher Education, and Vegas PBS. Coming up, we'll take you to the Women's Expo, which happened over the weekend. You're watching News 25. You're watching News 25. Local coverage you can count on. News 25 is brought to you by Mountain West Lawyer, Injury Attorneys, 727-9500.
Welcome back to News 25. The Women's Expo 2024 event took place on Saturday at the Nye Communities Coalition in the NAC building. And it was a busy turnout. News 25 caught up with the two co-chairs of this event to tell us more. I want to welcome you all today to the Seroptimus International Front Valley Women's Expo. We're really, really excited that we have like 27 vendors representing fashion, jewelry, health, wellness, um, banking, financial matters. Um, we have the, the chiropractor, and we have a masseuse. We have all sorts of amazing people here that offer services to women and girls in our community. We couldn't be happier where the people are just coming in and we're just overwhelmed and uh, the, the response was just tremendous this year and we're just so happy. The peop uh, participants are just coming in, coming in and we're just getting such rave reviews on it and we couldn't be happier. Okay, so welcome to the Women's Expo. What we have behind me is our big giant check. And what this does is this represents all of the money that Sir Optimus has given to women and girls in the community of Pahrump over since we've actually been um, chartered, which was in 2006 up until our present day. We just turned 18 um, here in Pahrump. And as you can see, we have actually donated tens of thousands of dollars to women and girls in our community through scholarships, awards, and other types of donations um, that will help benefit women and girls in our community. So that's what this big giant check represents and um, we're really proud. This is one of the things that, this is what we're all about is uh, Sir Optimus is a global, international organization and we're very happy and lucky to have our own organization or club right here in Pahrump, Nevada. Um, we're 53 actually, hopefully we'll get a few more members at this event strong and what we do is we raise money and we try to we put it back into our community to help women and girls so that's what this is all about more news now nevada state police is awarded two hundred thousand dollars for their resiliency and wellness program that aids officers mental health a law enforcement mental health and wellness grant of $200,000 has been awarded to the Nevada State Police's Wellness and Resiliency Program. This grant is to help develop a comprehensive behavioral health care system for personnel, family members, and retirees. The grant additionally will directly address the need for increased mental health support within the department. The program that will be created using these funds is designed to do the following. Reduce the stigma that is often associated with seeking help for mental health concerns, enhance awareness by implementing educational resources and training programs that help educate on the matters of mental health issues, build resiliency or resistance against stress, as well as promoting the importance of self-care, strengthen peer support by providing continued training for peer support team members, and by equipping them with a deeper understanding that fellow colleagues may face, such as depression, PTSD, addiction, and suicidal ideation. Lastly, the program will also expand access to mental health resources, such as creating a dedicated wellness app. The app is stated to offer features such as breathing exercises, grounding techniques, a directory of confidential statewide peer support members, self-assessment tools to identify potential mental health concerns, and strategies that'll help officers cope with stress. The Nevada State Police Director George Tagliati spoke on the matter, stating that the well-being of our officers and professional staff is paramount. This grant allows the department to establish a robust support system that prioritizes mental health and empowers personnel to thrive both on and off the job. News 25 Weather Cam is brought to you by Lerner and Rowe Injury Attorney's Office in Pahrump. In a wreck, need a check? Call 702-877-1500. Well, it's the Lerner and Rowe weather cam, and that is right outside the KPVM television studios right here. And that snow is trying to hang on as much as it can. Maybe some precipitation.
News 25 weather is brought to you by Dairy Council of Nevada. Undeniably delicious, undeniably dairy. Enjoy what's real. Good evening, Nevada. I'm Rory Rosell here from the Channel 25 Weather Studios and streaming everywhere at kpvm.tv and now Roku. Taking a look at Nevada right now, up in northern Nevada, Fernley and Fallon are both at 80 degrees. Carson City at Tonopah are both at 78 degrees. Goldfield at 79, Beatty at 88 degrees, Amargosa at 94 degrees, Las Vegas at 93 degrees, and Death Valley finally hit the triple digits at 104 degrees. Here in the Paradise of Prump, it is currently 89 degrees. The high today was 91 degrees. The wind was slightly blowing at 15 miles per hour to the south end. Humidity 13% today. It was sunny and the sun rose this morning at 6 o'clock in the morning and set at and is setting at 724 p.m. Humidity does raise up to 21% today. The wind continues to blow southeast at 11 miles per hour. The low tonight is going to be 60 degrees with clear skies. Let's take a look at the rest of the week. It looks like we're going to have mostly clear skies until Thursday and Friday when it's partly cloudy. And you can see Tuesday and Wednesday, we're going to have 80 degree weather until Thursday and Friday when we drop back down into the 70s and 60s and back up into the 70s and 80s next week. It looks like there's going to be smooth sailing for the rest of the week. Back to the desk. Here's Chris. Thank you so much, Rory. And we cannot say goodnight until we acknowledge a very important staff member and his birthday here today, Mikey Ruhan, little Mikey, a milestone birthday. He's our sports anchor, radio host, and technical director. Happy birthday, Mikey, from everybody. That'll do it for us here tonight. News 25, make it a great night.